everybody, and today was the final Bungie stream for Destiny Year One. And in this stream, we got to learn some things that are coming to the sandbox, some very small sandbox changes, and we also got to see the new weapons, new armor, new ornaments that are coming with the raids. So we're gonna go through all of the raid sets so you can see what they look like, and we're also gonna be talking about the weapons, which is a super interesting thing that Bungie has done in regards to raid weapon primaries. So let's kick things off with the new Vault of Glass armor. What you're looking at right here is the concept art for the Vault of Glass armor. Now this actually gives you a pretty good insight as to what the armor looks like. Of course, when it's on actual Guardians, it looks absolutely amazing, but I saw this and I was like, dude, <laughs> it's so shiny, it looks so cool. We get to really see that Vex leg on the left leg of the Hunter. I think that looks absolutely amazing. Now taking a look at what this armor looks like in game, I think the Warlock looked out pretty hard on it. Now don't get me wrong, the Hunter looks really good. I think the cape is really cool. I think the Vex leg especially is very, very cool. But the Warlock has these wispy things coming off the shoulders, which I personally think looks really great. Maybe I'll just have my hunter rocking a Vex leg and then I'll mix and match other armor because I do really like the Vex leg. The Vex leg makes me happy. The Warlock can also be seen here rocking the Mythic class with the brand new ornament on it. Now, just so you guys, in case you're wondering, I'm going to say right now, they didn't do any changes in the actual sandbox to Mythic class. So if you have a year one Mythic class and you use it in the Crucible right now, that is how the year two Mythic class is going to also perform. They're going to feel exactly the same. Nothing has been changed. It's just going to be 400 light. So if you want to use it in Iron Banner or, or Trials, etc., you will be able to do that. Now taking a look at the Titan, the Titan's really skinny and I kind of dig it. I kind of like my Titan to look more streamlined, the female Titan more streamlined. And of course we have the Wi-Fi signal on the titan's back which will hopefully get rid of all of those teleporting titans although i seriously highly doubt it now something that we do need to talk about is definitely the weapons because you would have seen as they were going through the characters that the hunter was wielding a fate bringer that looked different to the one in the person's hand who is walking also we just saw vision of confluence now this is because there's going to be two versions of every single raid primary weapon. That is including Wrath of the Machine, that's including King's Fall, Crota, and Vault of Glass. Now, what is the difference? The difference is that there's going to be a regular legendary version, which will perform the same, but it will not have elemental damage. Then there will also be an adept exotic version, which will have elemental damage. So if you want to have elemental damage, you want to have Fatebringer Year 1, it will indeed be an exotic weapon so it will take an exotic slot and I think that's how they balanced it they didn't want people running around with an arc fate bringer legendary and then black spindle probably and I don't know whatever I, I think it's just a way to balance it <laughs> so they look a little bit different you can see here the fate bringer is it's white and it's got like a yellow outlines on it now that is not an ornament that's just the way the exotic fate bringer looks so that one will have your elemental damage now the way that you get these elemental exotic raid primaries is by doing the weekly featured raid. If you do the weekly featured raid, you have a chance of getting this exotic version to drop. Now you can do the regular 390 light raids and get the legendary versions at 400 light of all of these weapons, but if you want to get the exotic elemental damage versions of each weapon, you will have to do the weekly featured. Now just to confirm so nobody gets confused Fuse, there's going to be elemental versions of the King's Fall weapons and also Wrath of the Machine. And this is just primary weapons. It's not special. It's not heavy because, of course, they already have elemental damage. This is primary weapons that will have exotic versions that will have elemental damage types, which you can get from completing the weekly featured raid. And that's how you get a chance of getting these items. Also, that's how you're going to get the ornaments to make this armor look.
look super duper badass. Now let's take a look at the Crota armor. This is my favorite armor. Green's my favorite color. <laughs> this is the concept art for the Crota armor and I think they really just push the boundaries with how insane this armor looks. It's just so out there, it's so glowy, it's so in your face, and I love the fact that they took it there. They weren't scared to make it just completely insane. Now to see what it looks like on actual Guardians in game. You can definitely see these guys coming. <laughs> this is definitely the glowiest. I mean, Wrath of Machine is also pretty freaking glowy, but this, the fact that it's green and glowy just I don't know, it just makes me happy. So first of all, we're taking a look at the Warlock. He's of course rocking the word of Crota, but as you get closer, you can see that it has this animation throughout it, which is really cool. And it's also on the Warlock's fingers. So I'm thinking when you're holding a weapon, you will sometimes be able to see that glowy thing happening on the fingers. So I'm excited for that. I like seeing my armor on my hands, you know? I like seeing the glow on my hands. So this looks crazy. Like you, I don't know if this is good to wear in PvP. But I'm gonna wear it because it's amazing looking. And another cool thing that they added is when you shoot someone wearing this armor, it takes away that glow. Boom. As you see, the rocks get like super crazy. They start like freaking out and then the glowy parts grow back. So you shoot someone, they lose all of their cool ornaments, their rocks get angry, and then they gradually grow back. I think that's really cool. I know it's such a minor thing probably, but it just looks so cool that I, I, don't, I don't know. I think it looks amazing. <laughs> now moving on to the hunter, like look at that head. That head is insane. And the Titan just looks like an evil dinosaur, I guess. That's what they said on stream. He looks like a crazy dinosaur. He, I mean, he, he does. He looks like a crazy dinosaur. <laughs> So I think my Titan will probably be rocking this set. It just, just, oh my God. The Hunter, the cape, I can't wait to get. I don't know if the little horns coming from the Hunters from the cape or the helmet. I feel like it's the cape. So if that's the case, then I'm totally going to be wearing that cape because I like me some horns. I like me some green. Green makes me happy. Now, before we move on to the next armor set, I do want to say that Black Hammer is not returning. I know that was a huge question a lot of people were thinking about because Black Hammer was pretty freaking broken. It is not returning. You will have to use Black Spindle if you're wanting to get that Black Hammer-like effect. Black Hammer's not coming back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but in positive news, Necrochasm is, of course, coming back with an ornament, and they've also changed the way that Necrochasm works. So initially, you had to get a precision kill with Necrochasm, and it will explode the target and do AoE damage to people around it. Whereas now, they've changed it to where any kill, whether it's a body shot or a headshot, will make the person explode and do damage to people standing next to them. They're also buffing auto rifles a little bit they're making their damage just be a little bit better they're making their range a little bit better so that coupled with the change to necrochasm could make necrochasm really deadly especially in 6v6 modes it could be really freaking good so i'm excited to get my hands on this and do a full review thing of it but that's a really good change because headshots on auto rifles are definitely harder to get than other weapons you're just kind of spamming the weapon so i think this is a really good change and hopefully it will make necrochasm have a a day of glory because it has never had one before. Now we are looking at the King's Fall concept art. As you can see, of course, it's Hive just like the Crota armor, but it has a much more tame <laughs> color to it. I'm sorry if you can hear that. That's Tobias smacking a ball around. I don't know. I can't stop him. So you're just gonna have to get over it. <laughs> but it's a lot more tame than the Crota armor. Crota armor is definitely super in your face. This one has a much lighter blue to it. So if you're someone who's not like me and you don't like super in your face, really glowy, super out there armor, this might be better for you than Crota. But it still does look really good. I think from this set, the Hunter's probably my favorite. I think it looks the best. The others definitely still look cool, but the Hunter has a little like mohawk thing going on which you will see when we take a look at the hunter but the idea behind this armor is that 
the energy within the armor is just coming out. It can't, it can't stay in the armor. So it's just leaking through all of the other armor pieces. Now also you will see the ornament for Touch of Malice, which basically gives you like a bat wing or something. It looks like you just grabbed a piece of flesh and just put it over your gun. So I don't know how I feel about that. You also get a little white tip. I don't know, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay looking, it's fine, it's cool. Now this armor also does have the same effect as the Crota armor where when you shoot them, they lose the glowy bits and then it grows back. The hunter, as you can see, looks pretty freaking cool. That spiky mohawk looks really awesome. I think the helmet looks really cool. I'm essentially just gonna be gathering helmets and capes for hunters. I mean, yep, yes. <laughs> And again, to confirm in case anyone missed it, these weapons will have exotic elemental versions of all of the primary weapons. So you will have Arc, Void, Solar, all that good stuff with the primary weapons from King's Fall, which of course they didn't have elemental damage before, but now the exotic versions do. And lastly on the armor fashion show, we have the most recent raid, which is Wrath of the Machine, which of course had ornaments before, whereas all the others didn't. But these ornaments are definitely a little bit more in your face. They have this crackling SIVA. It's like the SIVA is getting even more out of control and destroying your armor instead of peeking through in a beautiful glowy light, it's now destroying things. <laughs> now they did say that this armor has the most visual effects on it because as you can see it has like this, I, I don't even know how to explain it, it's like pixels are coming off of the armor. Pixels are just crackling away and coming off and you can see on the hunter's head, the actual hood helmet part, it's got this like glowy pixel thing going on. The warlock has the same thing. The titan's belt has it going on. So it's just really freaking cool. This armor, I think these ornaments actually look a lot better than the first one. The other one was definitely more subtle. It's like, you know, glows of light just going, ah, coming through the armor this is like no we're just adding pixels everywhere things are burning and i think it looks absolutely fantastic all i can hope for is that all this raid armor has some really good perks on it that i can actually use in pvp now as you can see we're showing off the new auto rifle which well i say new it's the exotic version of the auto rifle which will of course have the elemental damage looks super freaking cool i love the design of it i love the color choices for it so i'm just really excited to get my hands on all of these exotic versions of the raid weapons, see what elemental damage they have. It's going to be a blast. We are gonna be having an absolute blast for the end of Destiny 1. And the very last armor set, and a few weapons that you're gonna see with some pretty nice ornaments, is the Age of Triumph set. Now this set they definitely kept under wraps, they didn't show to anyone. This is stuff that you're gonna be able to get through the Age of Triumph boxes, Treasures of Triumph, whatever they're called. The ones that you can get three per week, week for playing for free but however however the cape the warlock bond and the little loincloth thing for titans <laughs> you can get that through doing the quest from the speaker now i did talk about that in the last video there's going to be a quest that you pick up from the speaker on completion of that quest you will get your warlock bond or your cape or your little loincloth thing now i think the class items look absolutely amazing as you can see the warlock one every so often it changes to a different image that's super badass i think the cape is so shiny it's so shiny it looks so good i'm excited for that that's just ugh, ugh, ugh. now this is chroma armor this is not ornaments this is chroma so you don't have to worry about going to the raid getting your age of triumph ornaments and putting it on this armor you can just put chroma they are wearing white chroma but of course you can wear any chroma you please that hunter cape i'm so excited i don't know how am i going to choose what hunter cape to wear i have no idea there's so many cool capes I, I don't know but this hunter cape is super glowy so i'm i'm super excited for that i think this armor looks really good i'm obviously most excited for the hunter cape because it's just so in your face it's so bright imagine that being a bright ass pink or green or something it just 
it looks really great. And of course, the weapons that you are seeing, you have Dragon's Breath, which we talked about before, which is now Tiger's Breath. You also have the Lord of Wolves skin here, ornament, I'm sorry, it's an ornament, not a skin. And you also have the Seros ornament. And Seros got two ornaments, which I will show you right here. This is, of course, the ornament that I showed you guys in that little clip from the trailer in the last video that I made. But there is also a second Seros ornament, which looks definitely more like Seros and less in your face, um, just black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Um, but yes, there's there's two Cirrus ornaments. <laughs> now just to talk about some sandbox stuff real quick, cause that's pretty much all of the, the weapons and armor and all that good stuff. In terms of the sandbox, you know how you're, br sandbox, you know how they broke the health regen stuff? Well, they're rolling back some of those changes. So for Ward of Dawn, so for Ward of Dawn, for example, those kind of things are going to just be completely normal like they were before. Things like Red Death, Lifesteal on Voidwalkers, and also Hungering Blade on Blade Dancers, they're going to remain as they currently are, but they're getting buffed in the sense that the amount of health that you get back when you trigger Hungering Blade, for example, is going to be much more than it currently is in the current sandbox. So we have to play with these changes and see how they go. I'm gonna have have to see how Red Death feels because I was actually really enjoying that weapon. So I'm going to have to see how big of a boost that is to the amount of health you get back per kill. But hopefully that makes these things a little bit more usable than they currently are. Now, of course, you will notice that No Land Beyond is in Deej's hand. It has the new kind of digital camo on it. Digital camo, camo, digital camo, camo. It has the digital camo. Also, it has flinch. It flinches like a regular sniper rifle now. So that nerf has definitely come in. In effect. Next, we're going to talk about Scories, which you will notice was activated after a kill. The way that the new Scories is going to work is that if you have a full super and you get a kill, the regular Scories effect that you know and love slash hate right now will trigger for one minute. So you have to get a kill while your super is full. And after you do that, you will get the regular scories effect for one minute. So this is just really aimed at Trials of Osiris. It means that if you want to activate scories, you're going to have to get in there with a full super and kill something to give your super to your teammates. That's the only way that it's going to work. So I feel like that's a decent change. At least it gets people out there in the action and fighting you instead of just sitting in a corner doing nothing. <laughs> there also was a very slight change to hand cannons and they said slight. They're bringing in the range just a little bit by three meters. Now this is not to say that the range in general is being affected. It's the damage fall off. So you're going to start doing less damage a little bit closer than where you currently do, but it's only a very small amount we'll probably notice in a few gunfights, but for the most part, I think you guys will probably not really notice it. Of course, I mentioned the auto rifle change, which is coming into effect where they're going to be doing more damage and have more range. We don't have the specific numbers on this yet. We have to wait for the patch notes to get that, but that is the change that is coming to weapons. That's pretty much it that's coming to actual weapons. Besides that, we have the scories change. We had the health regen change, which we talked about, but we also had a pretty interesting change to sidearms and also special ammo. So the way that sidearms work currently is that if you pick up ammo, you get to keep all the ammo that you picked up on a sidearm, all of it. Whereas now you only get to keep the ammo that is currently in your weapon. If you die with a sidearm, you only get to keep 12 bullets or however many it is that you personally can carry, but that's all you get. You don't get to just stockpile ammo. So it's enough to get you maybe two kills or so, but it's not something where you can just run around with a sidearm the entire game if you're not picking up special ammo. Now the special ammo change is something that was definitely needed, especially with the way that the special economy is right now. Special ammo, when you pick up a box, is going to work exactly the same as heavy ammo does in that when you pick it up, it automatically refills your special 
special weapon. You don't have to stand there reloading. So as soon as you pick up that special ammo, you are ready to go with your special weapon. Now, the only other change that was made was the truth. It still only has one rocket, but you can hold more ammo in your pants, in your backpack, wherever you like to personally hold your ammo. And it also reloads faster. It is the fastest reload stat for any rocket launcher. So hopefully that brings truth to a place where people actually want to use it. And we just had a pretty interesting thing happen on Twitter. Mr. Mesa Sean, our good friend Mesa Sean, asked Josh Hamrick, is there going to be a vendor refresh? And he answered, yes, I forgot to mention that, weekly, I believe. So this is confirmation that there's going to be weekly refreshes on the vendors. That's really good. <laughs> that's really good. They should have mentioned that in the stream because that's actually one of the better things that came from all of these streams is that there's going to be weekly vendor refreshes. We don't know if it's just going to be weapons or if it's going to be armor as well, but I'm excited for that. I'm hoping that they're just going to bring back all the weapons through all the time of playing Destiny and put them in the vendor. And that is it. We had a fashion show, which was definitely the most exciting part of the stream. We have some sandbox updates, which is going to make my answering cord a god. I'm going to become the answering cord Dreg's Promise God. I mean, it's kind of what I use right now, but I'll be better because the gun will be better. <laughs> so that's exciting. We're going to maybe see more auto rifles. We're going to see people running around with Necrochasm and stuff again, which is going to be exciting. And of course, all of the new armor is just, I can't wait to get my hands on it. I know we only have it until Destiny 2 comes out, but I think this is the perfect way to celebrate Destiny 1. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments section, what are you most excited about for March 28th? Now we know all of the info, what are you most looking forward to? Thank you guys again so much for watching and I will speak to you awesome people later. Bye.